Good morning guys, today's day one of painting and Grant's gonna walk through some of the supplies we need to get started. So first off, we got some drills here. This is for removing all of the drywall anchors and then we have a couple nails as well that are in the wall from the previous owner hanging stuff. So we gotta remove all those. Then we have some spackle and spackling knives to, to fill all those holes and have them dried over so we can paint. We got some nice brushes here. These are for specifically cutting in. They're a, a little bit stiffer of a bristle so that we can cut in and, and make it look very nice and clean and professional. Uh, we got some little buckets here for doing that, that cutting the work so you have to carry on the whole gallon. We got some maps. This is the best quality from Home Depot. And then we got some nice uh, paint trays. We'll probably put aluminum foil in here so we can reuse it over time. And then I highly recommend using frog tape. I've used a lot of Scotch tape in my time. Not the best product for painting, honestly. So this new frog tape, uh, it's it's actually really good, very clean lines, highly recommend. It's a little bit more expensive, but well worth it. And then here we're gonna start with the primer. Uh, we got six gallons here. It should cover the whole, whole house, but I need to buy a little bit more. Um, but we're gonna start with this, and then we'll get on to the actual colors. So yeah. Let's get started. All right, so we're starting with removing some drywall anchors. I thought this was just gonna unscrew nice and easy, but unfortunately that was not the case. This is one of those drywall anchors that um, kind of forms like a T and it sticks into the drywall and it's pretty hard to remove, similar to what's on screen. So we ended up just using a, a different way of taking this one out. <laughs> so maybe some, you know, brute force. And then you just push it back into the hole and that's your own thing. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Here again, we're just removing some old drywall anchors. There were actually so many, like riddled throughout the house. And a lot of also like, random outlets and whatnot, like empty electrical boxes, so. And they this had took these weird decorative covers on a lot of them. Yeah, there were a lot of mixed metals in this house, or you can see that light switch itself wasn't a true white. It was kind of like a manila envelope color. Just very interesting choices, similar to the colors on the wall. Yeah, so we're kind of making everything uniform is kind of what we're doing. At least that was our objective. More drywall anchors. This they came up with like a makeshift shelf at the side of the pantry, but it didn't really make much sense, so we took that out. So when you fill in a hole in your drywall, you want to smooth it out like that, and then you're gonna take, what is this called, dry dex? Yeah. This pink putty, and you really want to get it in there so it doesn't just fall into your drywall again. So as you can see, Grant's smoothing that out, but you'll also go back in there with some sandpaper and smooth it out. Yeah, it'll turn white when it's dry and then you can just sand it really nice and easy and make it smooth. Here I'm just wiping down the crown and I'll do the baseboard as well because we are coming in here with tape, but we actually ended up only taping this room and it took a lot longer than we thought it would. Yeah, like we had to do it in sections because you want to make it as straight as possible and so you can only do it in like two or three foot sections and it ends up, you end up realizing there's like a lot of, a lot of square footage to tape. So we did this for the first room thinking it was going to be a good idea, but as you'll see, we ended up ditching that idea for later, later rooms. The point paints a, a team process. Always a team effort. Already paint on my pants, so we love that. <laughs> yeah, I think I wore the same shirt and shorts for like a week straight when I was doing this painting because I didn't want to ruin anything else. Well, I ruined like four shirts and two pairs of joggers, so. Well, now you know. Finally, we're starting to prime. It was exciting to see the color go away, honestly. It was, it was on too long. And this is pretty quick here because we already had the tape the tape up there, so you didn't really have to think about where you're painting. This is actually a real-time speed, right? <laughs> yeah. We actually decided, we talked for a little bit, and we decided to just cut in by hand because we just felt like it took so long to tape, and then with each layer of paint, we'd have to wait for it to dry, take off the tape and reapply it because we didn't want to kind of get too many layers on there and have the paint uh, be peeled off with the tape, so. Yeah, if the paint dries on the tape as well as on the wall, when you go to peel it off, it'll peel off chips of the paint that are already on the wall and it, it won't have a straight line. So you have to actually peel off the tape while the paint's still wet. And since we're doing two coats of primer and then we ended up doing two coats of our paint color, you know, it was just gonna have to be re-taping it back, but between, like after each coat, you tape four times, it just wasn't worth, worth the effort. By the time we actually got to the second room though, I would say you get in a pretty good rhythm of edging and learning the technique. And we had, I was always doing the baseboards and Grant was doing the crown molding. So we had a nice little system going and edging did go by pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. And this, we bought this pole here. 
I used it here, but honestly, I, I like I preferred using just the roller by hand, but Bianca did like the, the pulling. I was a fan of the pull. Preference here. For these, I had to take out these decorative moldings that the previous owner put in. I cut that, that way, what you're seeing on screen with the utility knife to cut the caulk. And then here, there's like a little nail hole that I saw up and down the board, so I knew they had nailed it in, but I did not realize they had also glued these all in place. So I had to use a crowbar to, to pull these off, and unfortunately it pulled you know, the paint and the drywall with it, but with the media center that we're planning to build um, in a couple future episodes, it'll be covered <laughs> covered completely with by the, the this wall, so you won't see any of it. So it, I didn't really care cosmetically what it looked like, just needed need to get it off. And we got a free one half of a TV wall mounting system. Still listed on Facebook Marketplace if you guys are interested. <laughs> you just need to find the other half. <laughs> and you can see like the primer goes on relatively thick and you think like, oh, we might just need one coat. And then we were very optimistic there. A little, maybe a little too optimistic because <laughs> as you see, it kind of it dries and then the color still kind of shines through. So we ended up putting two coats on, on all the walls and you probably could have put three, but two was enough. All right, everyone. So we put a few coats of primer on. And this room, these were two yellow walls on the back and the left. So we put two coats there. This wall, if you remember, was like a deep red maroon looking color. So that required three for us to feel comfortable that it was white enough. And then in the, the living room area, this was all yellow. So we just put on two coats, looks pretty good. And then in the family room, Obviously this wall has not been primed. We're gonna be putting in a built-in as well as some cabinets in the bottom and then some wallpaper on the side. So all of this will be covered so it wasn't worth priming worth the time or anything like that. Uh, the back wall was the same green color. We put on two coats and we think it's, it's uh, white enough for us to put on our, our paint and not put on a third coat of primer. Our paint does have a little bit of primer in it so we're comfortable it'll look as accurate as possible. Moving in, we, we did this corner as well which is all green. And then we put on our first coat in the kitchen. This is just a little bit tricky just due to the, the tight spaces and all the nooks and crannies. We have to use our brushes as opposed to our rollers to do most of it. So it was just a little bit more tedious, but we're gonna put on a second uh, coat in here for sure since it was a deep blue previously. Potentially a third coat, we'll see how the second coat dries. But now we're gonna start to prime all the bedrooms and then put on our repose gray paint color on all the walls in the living space. So let's get started. So here we are obviously edging in the kitchen and the kitchen was like my least favorite room to do. Obviously I was standing the counters and whatnot and like my neck was cramping up and I was like, no one's even gonna see above these cabinets, but we still did our two coats of edging and primer here. So then now we finally got to start putting on the repose gray color and it looks really dark initially against the, the white primed walls, but once you once you'll see once you paint the whole wall like it it just kind of blends in it doesn't look so contrasting. So here you can see Grant's demonstrating the right way I would say to edge. So you get your brush brush pretty wet and then you apply pressure and just carry your brush through down and uh, yeah it's not too complicated but it takes like you kind of have, have to have a steady hand to do it properly but. I, didn't, I wasn't confident doing this at all when we started and now after having done all these walls four times each, uh, you, you get the hang of it pretty quick. And we decided to edge the entire living, living room space. <laughs> Great catch, Grant. I didn't want to spill paint, but. We ended up edging all of these rooms before rolling and kind of used like delayed gratification as our, you know, motivation there. So that once we were edged with all these rooms, we could just roll everything and kind of be done, at least for the first coat that is. Yeah, but when we got to the kitchen, I was like, let's just paint. Here you can see we did use some frog tape here. We just thought it would be easier with the counter and everything, but you would not get that crisp of a line with scotch tape. Yeah, frog tape all the way. Okay guys, so we finally finished priming everything. So we finally started edging all of the walls with the repose gray. We're very excited to see how all the walls look when they're finally filled in. At first we were a little bit nervous because it does look kind of dark 
against the primer, but you'll see in the kitchen we filled in a little bit more and we're excited about this color. We lift this wall blank, because as you know, we're gonna be doing a built-in, but continue that all through here. I think you can see here the color pretty well. It really pops against the trim and the cabinets. And then in the kitchen, we also did some more filling in, but we really feel like the updates in the kitchen look a lot better with this gray instead of that dark navy color. Then finally, we're back in the dining room. We're really excited to finally start rolling. We think this is gonna go by pretty quickly, but it's just gonna look a lot better here once everything is filled in. So let's get to rolling. So finally, the fun begins. Here, obviously, you can see it doing our teamwork to pour the paint. We finally get to roll all the walls, and it went by pretty quickly. How long would you say it took to do the living area? The whole living area, including dining room, living room, family room, eating, and the kitchen, probably took maybe an hour and a half. So it's really quick, but edging all those rooms took, you know, like two two full days. I'd say, uh, maybe one full day and a little bit the next day maybe. Yeah. Because you, like, if you want it done right and, and very crisp lines, you gotta go, you gotta go kind of slow. I also was a little bit nervous when you were rolling. I was like, this gray just seems darker, but like Grant said earlier, once that white is all covered up, the gray really pulls everything together. Also, when you edge a second time around, you really don't have to go super close to the crown or baseboard, so the second time around does go a lot faster, I would say. And now it's time to bring in the reinforcements. The big guns. <laughs> this was my family coming over one night to, to help out. And it was tricky because like, yes, we want help, but we need, like we're pretty precise and perfectionist with our painting thus far. And we kind of wanted it to the same standard, but you kind of also need to be considerate of people's skill levels and stuff. Yes, so exactly. Honestly, a, a this process too was just, I was absolutely sick of painting and priming and having, what was it, six people instead of two? Yeah. Like it, we got so much accomplished in one night. We were able to, I think, edge and prime, I think all one coat for all three bedrooms and the hallway in one night, so. One night being like two hours, because we've worked like pretty late into the night, the two of us. It was four times as many people, so yeah, from two to eight. Who is she edging down there? Who is that? It's a pro. It was pretty nice, like we are tearing out this carpet and the rest of the flooring, so not having to move a sheet around constantly and be careful of spilling paint made things go by easier. <laughs> yeah, so we didn't have to put down any mats or anything because the carpet was getting torn out anyway. So that was, that was a time saver. All right. I think they had the figures on the head of taking the trim off or reinstalled new trim in order to do this. Because uh, it's literally impossible to get in there. But we just bought, bought a one inch brush to hopefully do our best. It doesn't need to look like that great. No one's gonna be staring in here, but we're gonna try and at least cover it for the most part. Here's a nice clip of, of cutting in again. This is now on the baseboard. And if you listen closely, you can hear me breathing extremely heavily, heavily due to my deviated septum. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Darth Vader. So obviously you can tell this isn't me because I'd be flying through this baseboard. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not the baseboard guy, I'm the crown guy, but in this case I had to step in. Still got the job done. Finally here in the rooms. Again, I was nervous about the repos being too dark, 
but you'll see in a later video with the accent wall and then the new carpet, I think the gray just is perfect in there. All right, guys. So, <laughs> I'll be like, so You're this in, you don't is. <laughs> Look at how shoddy these are made. We're gonna take them off. Oh yeah, you gotta take that though. Oh yeah, how do you take them off? I think there's one. Like, I don't know. All right, don't be too rough. I'm not sure how they are to take shots. Oh, it's up and out. Magic! This can be my computer stand! Oh, that's perfect. Holy!